Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit off, but um, I have played a Bioshock Remastered, the original one, the first one just with updated graphics, and I really like the game. I honestly very like the game. Why I am saying this? So what I wanted to do, I wanted to look for a Bioshock 1 Remastered review that was produced by IGN and uh, see what kind of reviews I could get on the game that I personally feel that uh, I really like and I'm sure that I will return to it just probably not not within this this year or not within this month but uh, I'm, I will definitely return to it as this is an awesome game. Top comment says that back in the day IGN could review a game so I don't know let's see what kind of review they can come up to this is again this is the review from 14 years ago let's go i am andrew ryan and i'm here to ask you a question is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow no <laughs> says the man in washington it belongs to the poor no says the man in the vatican it belongs to god no, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose Rapture. Underwater City. Hey, this is Charles Onyet, here to review Bioshock, Irrational's first-person shooter for PC and Xbox 360, although now they're called 2K Boston and Australia. But uh, regardless of what their name is, they've made an incredible game here. The story follows Andrew Ryan, uh, someone who withdrew from the world and basically created the city of Rapture underwater and brought with him all the scientists and artists and creative people he could find so that they were free to follow whatever you know professional interests they had. Ken Levine said the game was based largely on Atlas Shrugged, which was Ayn Rand's last novel, and uh, such influence shows pretty strongly in the game's characters. And uh, But I think there's also some parallels to be made with Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Uh, Andrew Ryan is a lot like Rodion Raskolnikov's idea of an exceptional person, uh, believing that without fail there are those in the world destined to be incredible, and isn't worried about crushing others along the way. If it's for the greater good, basically ends justify the means. The fact that you can e even make these kind of illusions Jesus, I, I can tell you, even looking at this this trailer, it's it, it, this is the review. The game is so scary, even though this is like 14 year old game. It was remastered now, but the game is so scary. And uh, there's like four levels of difficulties within the game, like easy, medium, and then it goes higher. I remember I played on medium as I'm familiar with the shooters. And you are always out of ammo you always need to be on a constant lookout for enemies as they can jump from everywhere and j enemies are creative they're not just like uh, plastic dolls that just go there to uh, consume your bullets no they're just they're doing significant amount of damage and you're always on the lookout they could jump from anywhere and it doesn't feel like they're uh, they're faking it it really feels like the game is super engaging and you are trapped in the underwater city sorry for spoilers but i believe that everyone already played this game if you haven't played this game come on man it's i bought it for like five euros as a bundle from gta.com uh, i'm not advertising it literature and not just you know pop fiction like something like uh da vinci code how a proper breadth of reading preparation can actually allow you to more fully appreciate the game experience is a huge asset in bioshock something that hardly any developer or publisher wants to take a chance on and though andrew ryan had such a strong vision of creating rapture um it's clear pretty much from like the first five minutes of the game that he completely failed in pulling it off which you'll recognize within about five seconds of starting the game so you play a, a nameless hero you crash in a plane at the beginning and have to take refuge in Rapture or face certain death in the water because it's really the only structure there to save you. The action immediately grabs you by the nostrils and never really lets go. This game's sense of atmosphere, of immersion, of creeping terror juxtaposed with snippets of humor and really creates a dynamic, unnervingly believable and cohesive game world for me. You really get the sense that this place could actually exist as well as its inhabitants. 
So like in System Shock 2, story sequences take place with characters giving voiceovers while you're still playing, so they let the action continue while the story unfolds. No yeah. character in the game is flat, they're all expertly voiced, have multiple dimensions to them, and to the point where you find yourself even sympathizing with people you know or at least perceive to be villains. You just don't see this kind of character development in games today. Publishers and developers are far too willing to bypass story altogether, and Bioshock is a towering example of how engaging narrative and round characters can dramatically improve a game's quality. The game itself plays like a first-person... It's, it really looks like an amazing description by IGN. I, I'm, I'm really shocked and surprised. And ...shooter, yet with tons of different options for combat, so the gameplay here is just as interesting as the story. Since you get weapons, uh, lots of weapons, with three different types of ammunition each, each of which you can upgrade in different ways, then there are all the plasmid abilities, which are little uh, genetic modifications to your character that let you do things like shoot lightning, set enemies on fire, set environment things on fire, uh, shock people in pools of water, send them flying into the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, you can hack machines and get them to fight for you. And there, I mean, there's just a ton of different options. I don't want to spoil too many of them. But really, the combat in this game is so varied, just with all these plasmids and tonics, uh, which can modify your character, like giving you health when you hack a machine, and all the weapons, that it, it's really your own creativity uh, that determines how much you're able to get out of the combat system. And I know that yeah. may sound like a bullet point on a fact sheet, but in this game it's actually true. And there's even more than that too. There's an RPG-like level up system tied to a camera. Um, there's a somewhat limited ability to craft your own ammo for weapons and an involved and perhaps too frequently occurring uh, hacking system for taking control of machines. But really, when it boils down to it, all these like options for combat really hinges on the enemy AI, because if you're fighting against morons, then none of this would be very fun. Yeah. Fortunately, it works really well in this game. Enemies respond to your behavior-modifying plasmids, have yeah, interesting totally. attack patterns, and are generally pretty challenging, assume you've set the difficulty to hard. Big Daddy fights, which you'll have to engage in frequently throughout the game to upgrade your character, are some of the most intense battles we've ever encountered. Yeah. These guys are extremely powerful foes, they can knock you out with only a few hits, and uh, they're the perfect target to sort of use all the different weapon and plasmid combinations that you have. Man, you, you, if you face uh, Big Daddy, you are using all of your weapons, always, because they're so strong to the damage, they're very resistant, it's, it's crazy, and you need to fight them. On, on like constant basis have available and really the best part about Bioshock is how well all its parts fit together the way the narrative and gameplay mesh with the wonderfully realized world of Rapture and the stellar sound design I mean the sound here is incredible yeah and the game's phenomenal sense of pace you're never without something to do and it's not a short game yeah, it's either. a little bit like, creepy if you play at the hardest difficulty um, assuming you're not just rushing through it should probably take around 20 hours to beat so even with such a lengthy uh, single-player campaign I still left my first playthrough and wanted to immediately play it again. So. And the thing is, there's so much loot. There's so much loot and there's so much hidden loot. And there's even like a button that you can search again for items. Not the button, there's a skill, especially in the game. It's crazy. Like for example, look look at the health of, of, uh, of the person that's playing. He just beat uh, Big Daddy and he has like 1 HP left and 0 mana. To cast any sort of magic abilities it is that intense so i think that's a pretty good sign as to how how good this game actually is because there's so many things to do during the gameplay that even once you know the whole storyline you still want to go through and just check out what other things you yeah. can do with all the plasmids and weapons so basically what i'm trying to say with all this blabbing is just go buy the game you will enjoy yourself exactly it's crazy good crazy crazy good buy a shot Buy this game. I think this is an amazing IGN review. I believe this is this is something that 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 just can do with all the This is a good IGN review. I have nothing to add. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you like this one. This is kind of a weird one, but uh, I really wanted to share that I like this game. That's about it. 